Mike, turn your games down. Hi, everyone. Episode 154 of Games My Mom Found. I am Mike Hubbard, and who is leaving their house when they're 10 years old with me tonight? I am the eight-time Pokemon League champion, Commander Lionheart, reporting for duty. So I, 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 oh. for, I always forget because you do the countdown, but then you don't do the clap. No oh, oh, clapping. <laughs> this is <laughs> this is Kendall of the Kendallcast Ninja. Welcome back. Uh, not the Kendallcast. It's just Kendallcast Ninja. I, it was the Kendallcast, and then and then Justin Timberlake told me to remove the the. Are you kidding her? I can't tell. That's that's a reference to that's a reference to the Social Network. Oh, oh okay. I've never I've never seen that movie. It's, it's a good movie. Neither have I. I, I think I've I've I, I think it'd be really interesting if they did a sequel to it because Facebook has changed a lot since 2010. Yeah. But and but yeah, no, it's like it's uh, Aaron Sorkin, it's uh, Andrew Garfield, it's uh, Jesse Eisenberg, it's uh, you know if you'd invented Facebook, you would have invented Facebook. <laughs> there's also if you search the Kendall Cast, there's also a random podcast that that there is called Kendall Pod, Kendall Cast. It's religion and spirituality. Also, that came up. <laughs> Then yours came up too, but that was first. Oh wow! Uh oh, I better better uh, address that. <laughs> yes, the guy that has eleven episodes over the course of like six months or so. That's like um, that's like well, oh, that's eleven episodes over the course of six months isn't too bad. But it was the like the most recent one like in like twenty thirteen? No, it it started in March twenty twenty, and then he had a couple what, and then he skipped April, May. Yeah, and then he skipped September, and he went to September, October, then November, December, and then one in January. That was it. Mm. Okay, oh, 2021. Yeah, oh, yeah, this thing is dead. Not active. Yeah, I, I just, because, like... I don't know what year it is. There's there's so many podcasts out there that, like, I really wanted to, at various times in my life, I've really wanted to start a podcast called Serial, but spelled like breakfast cereal. And there's definitely, like, a bunch of podcasts that are called that already, and none of them are active. And it was like... Come on. And uh, that's what we called music. There's a podcast that was, that was called Then That's What We Called Music that sometimes people will stumble on. I think it's mostly gone from places, but it literally had two episodes. <laughs> yeah, that happens. And you are right. I found a couple of names serial that are no longer active. <laughs> yeah. Because that's such a, that's such a, cl- I mean, it especially would have been a clever joke like 10 years ago or whatever, whenever the serial originally came out. But anyway, podcasts. So and <laughs> before we go too far, there will be a giveaway for a Steam code somewhere in the middle of this episode, so stay tuned for that. And if you want to help out the show for as little as a dollar, you can vote in our poll. We have a Patreon poll right now, which you decide what MCU show we're going to cover. So you can hear back more about that later in the show. And these are the, and I want to introduce what we're going to be talking about tonight. So I had found these two volunteers, that was not easy to find, to talk <laughs> about Pokemon Emerald with me. They came out for Game Boy Advance in 2005. Damn. Was it tell? Damn. Yeah. Which is essentially it's 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 essentially the Pokemon when when Pokemon the other because Ruby and Sapphire came out two thousand three. This is the same game. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Extra okay. stuff of Gen three of Pokemon. Okay. okay. Yeah. I, I was like two thousand five. I thought it was two thousand three, uh, but no. Yeah. They, yeah. I'm well, wrong. some YouTube said it was two thousand four. When I when I tag my YouTube videos, it says two thousand four. Maybe two thousand four was the Japanese release. Yeah. Two thousand four Japan. Hmm. 2005 okay. is more that's why my youtube that's why my youtube views aren't getting any views because uh because in addition to the fact that i don't have any followers <laughs> on that channel they uh they, they they think i'm they think i'm streaming the japanese game yeah i'm sure you have me i, I subscribe <laughs> i don't watch but i subscribe for you <laughs> uh don't worry like when i did the the emerald and alpha and alpha sapphire episode of first strike a few weeks ago it, it wasn't that hot either it's 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 almost like pokemon it's like some of the very popular games it all depends you know that like maybe you will get lucky and people will watch it and it's, sometimes they won't you know like i did halo last night for the first time and youtube is just like two views so <laughs> this was actually supposed to be pokemon platinum because i was like oh i want to do platinum mm-hmm. with shiny pearl it just came out mm-hmm. but i could not find like anybody to play platinum because everybody's playing the new remakes of Pearl and Diamond, so that's how this became Emerald. Then, because I, I wish you would have stuck with Platinum, because I would have wished that I had been playing Pokemon Brilliant, Brilliant, whatever. I want you to play Platinum, not the remake. 
Yeah, that's the, the that's the thing. <laughs> uh, here's a secret. See here's, see, here's a secret, Mike. I still didn't play the game that you asked me to. <laughs> so, Emmanuel, what is your history with Pokemon Emerald? Oh boy, my history with Pokemon Emerald or my history with the entire Pokemon series? Just Emerald. Just Emerald. Okay. Uh, I didn't play this game up until like ten years ago, probably. Mostly because I had Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire when I was a kid, and I beat those but i never got around to getting pokemon emerald and i never did i uh, i don't know how loosely we're supposed to talk about emulation here but uh you know i emulated it uh 10 years ago because i wanted to see what the differences were between all three versions i guess and yeah that, that was my my experience with it at least with the one that you're talking about because okay. I'm... Now, what about you kendall i mean so first of all i will say it's literally impossible to play this game without emulation because the original cartridges, the pe- the batteries went bad and it messed up the internal clock. Like almost, almost all of them. I've done my, I've done my research. So uh, I think if there's ever a game that, that you don't need to feel bad about emulating, it's, it's the, it's the Game Boy Advance Pokemon games. So I never feel uh, bad about emulating Kendall. Never. Me either. Well, I mean, I, <laughs> but I think there's a I, I, I think there's lot you know there's levels. I'm not saying that I've never <laughs> that I've never emulated Super Mario Brothers, but there there are ways to legally obtain to legally play Super Mario Brothers. Yeah. There's it's literal like even if you own the original hardware, you can't play you can't pl- you can't play this game correctly because the because the the ba- the internal batteries and and Pokemon has and and Nintendo has never re-released it, which I think is stupid. That's an important talking point because I do, because I personally, I mean, I, I'm not saying that I, I mean, I have a Raspberry Pi. I'm not saying I don't I don't emulate things, but but I do when it's when there is a, an official release for for a game, and I you know I don't judge people that otherwise, but like, and I also don't play that many games. <laughs> I will I will support the official release. I like I love the I love the Switch having a subscription service. I haven't I haven't upgraded to the N64 stuff, but I do but I do like I I've heard it's kind of buggy, but but I don't mind paying for that kind of stuff. It's just it's a like what you're emula- trying to say, what is trying to when say something is, isn't accessible, you don't feel bad about, you know, getting it in other ways because it's not out there. Like I it, If anything, if anything it's that I'm angry that I don't have the choice of because this is definitely a hundred percent. This is a game that I would purchase if it was legally available. Yeah, you know, I mean, was, like if, example, if it was officially available on eBay, you can buy it for one hundred and fifty dollars for somebody open up and put a new battery inside it, so you can finish. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. So, okay that's so, yeah. But okay, would you want the same game or just you know like a remake like Alpha Sapphire and? No, and, I want the same and, game. The same, same game. game? Okay. Yeah, a hundred percent. So yeah. av- available digitally. On like a virtual console, but on the Switch right now. Is what right, exactly, okay. exactly. Yeah, I mean, like I bought both. I bought red version and yellow version and silver version and crystal version on the 3DS. You know, those are that was actually like some somebody was like, "What's your what's your game of the year?" And I said the year that it came out. And I said, "Well, my two games of the year are Pokemon Crystal and the SNES Classic." Like, <laughs> you know, I I because I'm a, I'm a fan of I'm a fan of this stuff. Uh, so as but as far as my as far as my history with Emerald, this was my first playthrough on Emerald. Mm. I have played I have played Ruby Sapphire as well as or I think I played Ruby if it matters. I played I played through Ruby and I played through Fire Red. So I've I've played some Gen I've played some Gen three. I've also played the 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 rem- the Gen three remake. I think I had I think I had Ruby version for that. I or think no, those no, are think, close to the same. Yeah, uh, but um. Regard, yeah, I you know, so I played, I played the remakes. Um, I Gen three and Gen four were the generations where I was too old for Pokemon, but not, but also not old enough for Pokemon. That's interesting because I did not play Gen four until 2016 when I got a 3ds, hmm. and coming back to Pokemon and with that gen specifically, I, I did not. This is why I wanted to play. And I, and I still want to play Brilliant Diamond because I got it. I, I bought it. But I didn't feel like it was too much of an evolution. <laughs> God damn it. Pokemon Evolution. It, it, was, it didn't feel like that much of an evolution with that game. Like the leap between the, the, the GVA. From, like going from the Game Boy Color from 
Pokemon Crystal to Ruby Sapphire Emerald, like that was a, a, a somewhat of a a small transition, but it was felt. You know, you could feel that there were differences with Pokemon Emerald to Diamond Pearl and Platinum. I didn't feel that 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 much. Like I didn't feel that gap of like six years between when I played Emerald and Platinum. Mm. And I was ultimately I, I I didn't like the gen. It's my least favorite gen, and that's why I want to give it a second shot with Brilliant Diamond. Like I I felt like black pokemon black and white were much better versions of gen 4 so by the way i don't know black and white is gen 5 though right yeah black right and white right he's five. saying he's saying that that uh black and white does does what does what gen 4 don't <laughs> yes i and I, I i i do need to say that it's because uh, i don't know i love what black and white did with restricting the pokemon that appeared to just being new Pokemon, mm-hmm. like not recycling the old Pokemon, like like in Gen Four. Gen Four had a lot of recycling the old Pokemon throughout the whole journey, and I felt I was, and that's why I didn't feel like you know I was I missed out on much. Like I was yeah. like, yeah, I, I, okay, so it's still Pokemon is still the same shit, and I see the same Pokemon that were in the past three generations. So I don't I don't feel that satisfied with what I'm playing right now. Unlike uh, Gen Five, where I definitely saw right. a difference. You know? Yeah, I mean, I think Gen I think Gen Four was it, it moves you back to the classic to the classic lineup of Pokemon mm-hmm. because if you had just been playing Gen Three, which especially if you were playing the you know Ruby Sapphire, that was like Gen Five, where until you beat the Elite Four, you're only seeing new Pokemon. Um, and of course, they're Gen three Pokemon, so they're the worst designed Pokemon. But I feel like in this game, it was mostly new Pokemon most of the time. It's a it's a mix. Um, yeah, I, it, I think that it's closer to it's closer to what they did with Gen six, where I mean, although they didn't it didn't open up as fast as I would have liked. Once it once it kind of opened up, once the world opens up a little bit, there's a pretty big variety of Pokemon. So it's it's a mix of it's a mix of of the Gen three, especially when you're considering it's only the first three generations. Like it's a mix of the Gen three Pokemon and the Gen one Pokemon to the point where there was a big enough variety that I that I boxed my starter, which uh, which I don't always do. I never box my starter. Never. I, if it's if it's a good game, I I do. I can't. If, I the, well, I mean, Emerald kind. Emerald is also the first game. With the first Pokemon game that ha- lets you run, you get the running shoes pretty early on, which is something new for this gen. Other thing that was new about this gen is you get to be either a boy or a girl in this gen. Those are both brand new things that they yeah, added. With I know this. that. I know that matters to the boy. The boy girl thing matters to some people. It doesn't. <laughs> no, it doesn't matter to me either. But I just yeah. I like the fact that they yeah. put new features in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The running matters to me, but no, I don't care if I'm a. But let me let what, me just clarify what I what I said earlier about earlier about my about my my history just real fast with i think it's important that you guys know my history with with pokemon (laughs) and the listeners because it because i'm a very very big pokemon fan but i had i hit it it hit at a weird time i think you guys your story i'll do mine (laughs) yeah i think mike is about my is like this exactly my same age so he probably has a similar experience so pokemon red and blue came out and i was actually like a little bit reluctant to get into it because i was a contrarian either even as a fifth grader uh but it it did (laughs) But it did come out like by the time it was by the time Pokemon was like in full swing in like, you know, 99, 2000, I was in like fifth, sixth grade. So I was I was I was in it, but I was at the it was very clearly like the tail end of the, you know, because when because once you hit middle school, you're too old for Pokemon. You know, you have to be ashamed of it if you play it. So so I so I played it. And and I got into the cards and I got it real into the TV show and everything for the first gen. And then I did get silver version for my it, w- it would have been my I think it would have been my 13th birthday, which like, I don't know. It was like it was like I, I had to I basically like played I, I brought it on the bus and played my Game Boy, but like, you know, hid it from people. So people didn't know I was playing it like <laughs> there was an element of shame there. And then. And then I was I was I was out by Crystal and uh, and and I did I did go back and play through play through the Gen One and Two games a bunch of times throughout my throughout high school just because you know it's like you're on a trip and you have a copy of the game and I was very I still think I still think that the that there is something very special about the first generation games 
specifically red and blue. Like there's, there's something very, very special about those, you know, those sprites that are like a little bit ugly. Like the game hadn't, Mm -hmm. hadn't fully doubled down on being a a crazy little kid, cute property. Like it was still kind (laughs) of trying to be a JRPG thing. And then as an adult, I, I, I rebought, I, cause I had sold all my, all my Game Boy games. I rebought red and blue for my, she was my girlfriend at the time, but she's my wife now for us to play through together. She didn't, she, it, it didn't red and blue, red and blue didn't hook her, but like the idea of Pokemon kind of, I think she was interested in. So she bought us when we could not afford it. <laughs> 3DS is right after the first price drop for the 3DS. Uh, so we didn't get the ambassador program, but our, our three DSs are still black. Uh, she bought us three DSs in black and white. And then kind of, I've, I've basically kept up with the games since then, you know, getting, you know, various levels of levels of depth. And then I did go back and play the gen four games and the gen three games since then, but they're definitely gen, but gen three is, is, is a gen three and gen four are definitely like where I have the least experience because I played through those games once, you know, to get the experience and it, but it was a critical path, go from the beginning, get the elite four, maybe get the, maybe get the legendaries, but I wasn't trying to collect every, anything or do any breeding or do any competitive battling or anything like that. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. I, I'm a little bit close to that. Like I, I played Pokemon red and blue when they came out, a friend of mine who was like five, six years old and me introduced me to them. And I, I kept playing them in the sixth grade. I was definitely a fan in sixth grade. I had silver, but I didn't get crystal. And I never, I actually never played Pokemon Emerald to about three years ago. Right. Not that long before I started the podcast, I played through Emerald with all, and then I went through again for this episode. Oh, one other thing. One other thing. I didn't realize that the concept of, of a, of a game where you walk around and you have a team of people that are fighting and you run into random encounters I didn't realize that's what a JRPG was <laughs> until probably like five or six years ago. I got nothing. So, so <laughs> I thought for most of my life, I thought Pokemon is this unique experience mm-hmm. where you, where you get a, you're, you get a party together and you have them and you have the turn-based battling and, and all this, and all this stuff. So that also like is, is part of why Pokemon especially those especially that that gen one where it was where it was kind of trying to be dragon quest oh yeah like, that's because jrpg right right yeah yeah but it was like it was still tr- it was really trying to be that gen one it was it was trying to be a, a true jrpg as opposed to being a you know something that's a little bit more cutesy uh what that would come after that um, that's part of the reason that I love those games so much is because I thought that they were the only ones. I didn't realize that Final Fantasy and and Dragon Quest is. Although I've never finished a Final Fantasy game, so I don't oh, know. Wow. Go play six. That's all you need to play. Well, there's I a lot of other like, ones, but that game's I amazing. I played like 45 minutes of six. Six is amazing. That's that's more than what I've played. So it's and and it, and it wasn't the limited amount that I played wasn't wasn't like speaking to the quality of the game. It was like I didn't have. For me, like you have to, for video games, you have to have like the right chair and like the right controller and the right context to really die, get sucked into a game like that. No, um, I agree. You got to be in the right and, mood uh, too. Yeah. I, so when I tried when I tried Final Fantasy VI, I was not. I was like I was like staying at my parents' house, and it was on the SNES Classic. And so then I like I played that night there, and then like I moved the SNES Classic back to my apartment. And it wasn't hooked up immediately, and then I just didn't get back into it. But anyway, yeah. So <laughs> other people talk. I, I okay. I, I got my point across. That's my history. With me, okay. I played it early, and that's and then I finally went back to it. And I, well, we will get more into it. But I mean, yeah, it's a good game I, for the most part. Okay. Um, what um, I do want to say is like I like how this one starts off where he's trying to find. You know, where you start off moving, like the first thing you do is you move and then you see the the machokes are moving your, you know, <laughs> your items and stuff. That amuses me a lot more than it probably should. But I think it's cool for some reason. Mm. I just did. I don't know. It, it's, it's it's I mean, it's just like a regular Pokemon game. For those that don't know, it is a JRPG where you catch little monsters and then monsters become your team. Uh, what I do want to ask first thing I should say is who do we all pick? And Amanda, who'd you pick? I picked Trico. Which is the grass one, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
And then I went with Mudkip because you guys, because Kendo had picked Torchic, which mm-hmm. is the fire one. So, I mean, to kind of give us all a different, like, feel of the game. I mean, I've heard Mudkip is one of the best, which is the water type. But he does really make the early game much easier. Because I did not have any problems. I didn't have any problem with Trico either. So, Did you have any problems, uh, Kendall, with fire starting? Yes. I felt like, I felt like every, in this game, I felt like every single gym leader, I did not have any type advantages whatsoever. And I did, <laughs> yeah, so, so I struggled. Yeah, I struggled. But here's the, the biggest, the biggest struggle, struggle with, uh, with having a fire type with, with starting with Torchic is that there's so many cool fire type Pokemon early in the game. So after about two or three badges, I'm trying to pull up my thing here. Can I mute the audio here? You didn't mute yet, but yes, you can. <laughs> I'll talk about it. Anyway, that doesn't matter. It's so loud. I have the game pulled up. So, so loud. Hmm. We're professionals, I so, promise. I, I could give my story of Pokemon as you do that. So Torkoal, I, I actually, whatever whatever he evolves from, I I boxed my Torchic and replaced him with... Uh, I don't Torkoal. think he evolves. You're talking Torkoal about doesn't Torchic. evolve. Yeah. He's a he's a Pokemon. he's a single po- he's a single Pokemon. He doesn't evolve okay. or just have a previous from evolution from something. Oh, oh, unless, okay. Unless what you had was Slugma. No, he I didn't evolved. have Slugma. Okay. No, I guess you're right. Well, hopefully he's good. I mean, he seems good. <laughs> I thought he was going to evolve into Camerupt, but I guess that uh, no, that's um no, the that's, camel. Yeah, evolved, that's the camel. Um, I didn't look up. Pokemon. I didn't look up uh, who who evolved into what. So I always when I do that, I always catch the wrong ones. Anyway, I thought he. I always thought he was cool, and uh, so yeah. I just and there were just other ones, other Pokemon that I that I like. Uh, Mighty Yina, I I really I really like, and and so I and, and Hariyama. Those 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 were really my three starters because I caught them early and kept them on the team for for the duration of the game. Um, I just yeah I. My thing with starters is especially the ones that are not like sometimes I want to play like a super nostalgia run where I'm just pl- where I'm just using my favorite Pokemon. But and and then sometimes like if it's a new game, I want to do a or, or maybe even one that I haven't played before. I want to do a run with, you know, with that generation starter Pokemon. But if I'm doing a replay and I'm feeling like maybe I should like try different Pokemon that I haven't played before. Having having a Pokemon that I know is gonna it's it's either fire or water or grass, and I know it's gonna have three evolutions and it's gonna evolve at level 16 and 36, and it's gonna learn, you know, flamethrower or hydro pump or like it's just I mean, a, a lot of times they are really cool designs, but you know, whatever. Who cares about Blaziken? I mean, I, I have no nostalgic for this game because I didn't play it till later. I still tend, like, a lot of times the way that I'll play a game, that I played this game, like, I will start with whatever Pokemon I get early on if they fit the type that I like. Like, for example, one of the first Pokemon that I grabbed that stayed with me the entire game is I grabbed a... God, what the hell does Swellow evolve from? So, Tallow or something? Tallow. Tallow. I caught a Tallow and I kept him the entire game until I fought the Elite Four. He stayed with me because it, I needed a flying type. Like my other one, my other Pokemon I use is I caught an Electrite and evolved him to Mancetric, which is a electric Pokemon. And I kept him the entire game too because I like having electric type. I was trying to get a fire type like Numel, but then I just didn't care enough. Like I actually never made a sixth team. I only had four Pokemon that I used the whole game. <laughs> Damn. I just oh, wow. didn't. I don't. I mean, when I used to play, I remember I used to level up everybody and. Like, I just don't care. I just level up certain Pokemon, and I just got through the game like that. Mm. What about you, Manuel? Who did you? Who were you? Some of the ones that you used? <laughs> well, you... I should probably now would be a very good time for me to confess and say that I was playing Pokemon House for Sapphire, and not Emerald. I figure. Yeah, I <laughs> yeah. It's just it was easier for me, and I I looked at the how long to beat, and it was supposedly shorter. Dan Emerald, and I st- it still took me a while. And even using, I'm gonna say it, I, using cheats on the, the, the on the emulator, using like five times the experience and, and all that shit. I I also used what's the name of the? There's a there's a thing. Ah, uh, what's the name of the shit? Pokemon. It's Ph. A Pokemon. I don't know. What Pokemon Hex. Pokemon Hex. I think where you can basically like get uh, mystery gifts. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yes. Wait a that, second. You you played a gen you played a gen six game 
and still and still got extra experience. You you just use the EXP share in, in yeah. Gen Six, and then you get yeah. like infinite experience from that just in the game. Yeah, and I put it at five times the experience so that I could fasten up the process, and it still took me like thirty hours I, to to beat the fucking thing. So, I've look, man, I've I've been through this song and dance five times. This is the fifth time that I've been in Gentry. I beat it, still it once. Took you, it still took you thirty hours. It still hours. took so me thirty hours. No, it's just that I just stopped to capture to try to capture as many things as I can to level up. I also let it uh, idly sit by while I was doing something else. So I, well, I don't count then. I don't know. I just I saw that the timer at the end, it was like 30 and I'm like, oh, whatever. Sometimes um, it count, Sometimes it does count that that time if you're if you're sitting idle, because I definitely played one of the 3DS games and I just like I let I let it I just closed it instead of instead of actually turning it off and it kept the timer going. And so mm-hmm. I had like 180 hours in it. Oof. <laughs> Jesus, I can't do that. I, I mean, I play this on my phone because that's just the easiest way for me to play it. And I put in and I play in times two speed the whole game because Pokemon is just so damn slow. Oh, that's also another thing. I, to, I this is the first time that I've ever done this for a Pokemon game. And I've played all all eight generations. I turned off the battle effects like I, I was <laughs> insistent on just trying to get through this as fast as possible because I knew I, I probably wasn't going to make the deadline. Considering that I have all the other games that I have to play. Well, you have a you have a history with this game too, though. So, like you said, you yeah. beat it like five times. I've I've beaten it five times. I beat it Ruby. I beat it Sapphire. I beat it Emerald. I beat it Alpha Sapphire on the 3DS, and I beat it Alpha Sapphire again on the 3DS emulator. I, I mean, another I, thing about Pokemon Emeralds, I feel like this is the one. This is the game where they start adding more of a story to mm-hmm. the games. Yep. Where like the legendaries like in, in the region that you're in, Hoenn, the game all revolves around two different terrorist groups, which if you were playing Ruby or Sapphire, you'd see I'm assuming you see Team Aqua or Team Magma respectively, depending on which game you're playing, correct? E- yes. If you're playing Sapphire, uh Team Aqua is the the main big bad. Team Magma does show up. Uh but they're like they're they're just like trying to oppose Team Aqua. Like the there there's not the whole Pokemon Emerald where both of them are trying to get their their goals done. Like one awaken Kyogre and the other one awaken Groudon. Like in in Sapphire, it's just Kyogre, and vice versa for the other one. And and they're they're like not that much of a presence in throughout the game. Like what's the name of the team Magma Maxi? He he just shows up like two or three times in whenever Team Aqua is around, and and that's about it. Okay. So like I, this- I want to throw something in because yeah. you guys were talking about how your 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 emulation strategies. We all played this game wrong. Just I just want to acknowledge <laughs> that we all played this game wrong. Okay. Because the thing about Pokemon, especially mm-hmm. old Pokemon games, mm-hmm. you talk about it being so slow or what. That's the point. If you're supposed to do it at the end of the day to turn off your brain while you listen to a podcast. It's supposed to be relaxing. It's supposed to be, it's supposed to be, uh, you know, j- sort of a a time sink. You accidentally lose six hours. This yeah. is this is where I this is where I struggled because I like because with a, with a Pokemon game, if you're not in the mood, you're not supposed to play it. Mm-hmm. You're supposed to be doing literally anything else in your life. That's that's why I said, Kendo, at the beginning that I wish I were playing Pokemon Di- Brilliant Diamond because <laughs> I was looking forward to playing Brilliant Diamond. <laughs> As the next one, so, and instead yeah, I had so to play just, this one for the podcast I just, because I don't this know, is like, work. Like, because, because I, I tried. I was, uh, I got, I got stuck. I so I don't know. Maybe we're doing this out of order, but oh, well, it's fine. I don't care. It's just talk. So I got, I got, I kind of hit a brick wall. I didn't, I didn't finish the game. I'm going to finish the game. You should. So that's first of all, that's important. It's a good enough game that even though I'm doing it for, even though I was doing it for homework, I'm going to finish it. <laughs> and uh, and but. First of all, the first thing I did wrong was I said, I'm going to stream every gym battle. And, and so then it was like, if I'm not in the mood to stream, I can't fight the gyms, mm-hmm. which messed, messed up my momentum a little bit. But, but the bigger thing was I hit a brick wall at about, I think it was between the sixth and seventh gym where the, the game really opens up. And that's where you are doing the, the team magma plot, which I disagree. I disagree that there was more. I feel like the story made no sense. 
made more sense in the in in the remakes, but I feel like there's plenty of story in in Gen One. I mean, Team Rocket is their villains, their mustache twirling villains that steal Pokemon and they take over Silthco, and then you have the whole all the all the Mewtwo backstory stuff that you find in the like. I think there's there's some real depth to the story of 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 Gen One uh, that that I don't. I mean, maybe I just haven't. There's a lot watch, watch the anime or whatever. <laughs> There's a lot of story is. here too. Yeah, it, I it's think not this like, one becomes more story. Yeah, it, it's not like Gen One doesn't have a story that, but you know, this one is where it just goes full in to actually okay. bringing you a story. Like, so Team Rocket is like part of it, but it's not the main conflict of the game. You're, it, you, it's not like you're actively trying to stop Team Rocket. You just happen to, to bump into them almost all the time. Here, you are always bumping into Team Aqua and Team Magma because they are trying to basically end or reset the world. Uh, so, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think, I mean, maybe there's maybe there's more story here, but it's worse. <laughs> and, I can take that. I mean, it's um, and 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 because it's and because it's worse. It's, it's less engaging. I mean, I don't know what the story is because I just went like a a a a a a a like I always do, you know, like I always do because because when I play a Pokemon game, I want to play through the gyms. I don't care about the side story. And there's very there's a couple exceptions. I think like Black and White having Team yeah, I was, Plasma I was mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, X and Y having the guy that looks like a tiger. I forget <laughs> what his I forget what his name is, but I he's like a really compelling thing. character. And then, and then, yes, red and blue. I think, I think, are kind of the exceptions with the, with the story. But I just, you know. But anyway, the thing is, I hit a point in the game where I kind of, you know, I, I actually had to look up on a guide like where am I supposed to go next because it was very. It's a little confusing. Old old yes, school RPG of is. like you have to you have to find the one person on the entire map to to uh, to talk to, and if you don't know the. If you don't know the directions you're supposed to go, it's not it doesn't do the best job of directing you. But I was I was really enjoying just like wandering or just like getting lost and like wandering into a building and, you know, fighting some trainers that are more or less at the right level uh, when the game when the game opened up. I was really enjoying that. But I was like but then also I was like, I have this much time until I have until I have to beat you know, until I have to, you know, be on this podcast. I know that once I get to the elite four, it's going to take me basically a week of grinding, you know, and it just, and I, and I was like, well, okay, I'll, I guess I'll just, uh, I'll just marathon it all weekend. And then I just like, I played for a few hours on Friday night and a few hours on Saturday morning. And I was just like, I don't want to, I don't want to play Pokemon and not enjoy it. So that's where I sort of like, you know, I said, you know what, I'm going to, I'll just, I know, enough, I know enough to be able to talk about it, but I think it's I think it's very important because I've been on a couple of these games my mom founds and this is at least the second one where I felt like our opinions of the game suffered because we rushed through it. Goldeneye was a similar was a similar thing where we um, didn't play multiplayer. Where, well, first of all, we didn't play multiplayer, and second of all, there was some criticism of because of the difficulty and unfairness of the game, where like. You know, it's because we all wanted to beat the game in a week. Well, yeah, if we'd have been different. able to beat, the, if back in the day, if we'd have beaten the game in a week, we would have been mad. <laughs> this is the only game that we had for six months. You know, and yeah. um, and I mean, Pokemon. I mean, Pokemon games are a way of life. Like, I mean, yeah, the usually the the campaign is only about thirty hours, but they can be it can be longer if you're taking your time. <laughs> if and, you're capturing uh, everything, and yeah. then yeah, and then I'll well, not even capturing, just like. If you're just, you know, if you're just leveling stuff up, if you're not, if you're not playing, you know, if you don't grab the legendaries, if you, if you box your, I mean, boxing your, your starter. The other thing is your start, the starter is like a, one of the most powerful Pokemon in the game consistently. So if you box your starter, then you're, you're having to, you're having to use Pokemon that you actually run into in the wild. Uh, so that can be, you know, that adds a little bit of challenge. Makes it less fun in my opinion. Makes them, to me, it makes it more fun. But, I don't like challenge. Same. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Because <laughs> no, I love. I, get... I mean, I love. Gr like, I love grinding. There's, there's nothing like if I, if I don't have, if I don't. Yeah, that's that's the thing too. Like, I was, I was like, like on Friday night, I was like, I need to, I need to get my guys leveled up so they can fight this gym so that I can get to the next thing. 
And so I, I did turbo mode for the first time on my emulator where I go like super fast everywhere. And I was it's just nice. like, I was just surfing around fighting tentacles and just using up every single, just every single Pokemon, just like using an aggressive attack again, you know, whatever one. And just, you know, so in like over the course of, over the course of like, uh, like one hour, I got like eight hours worth of grinding in. Well, yeah. That's, that's the right way to play it now. And you know, adults. I mean, we can't play Pokemon the way we once did because we're not kids and we're not, I mean, especially when you're playing an older gen like this game. I mean, part of the fun of Pokemon was training with people that you knew and talking to them and battling them. And when you play an emulator or just playing something this old, that 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 fun is gone because you what's the chance you're going to find someone with a GBA, you know, so that that does like, you know, I never like I never like trading. I never like trading. I, I always like I, I like I like the I like taking my time with it. In school, I never had anyone to actually trade or battle. So that was something that was like alien to me. Yeah. And you're missing out on that. But I mean, when as I was talking earlier, like with Team Aqua and Team Magma, I like how they're both idiots and they're both trying to destroy the world without realizing it. Like one wants to await Kyogre and flood the world so there's more water, while the other one, Team Magma, wants to wait Grodon and make there more land, which will ruin the world either way mm-hmm. <laughs> like it, at least it gives you a it gives you like a reason of what you're doing and you're trying to save the world and i like i always like the idea of these legendary pokemon that are actually like you know like like i think aren't these like almost like gods pretty much kyogre and, and rayquaza which is the new one they added which is in the original Ru- ruby sapphire correct emmanuel yes he is in the original ruby sapphire okay. but he's not a part of the story all right, like in this, I, I like how the story goes there eventually, where you have to stop, where they they wake up both Grodon and, and Kyogre as the story progresses, and they start fighting each other, and you have to go find Rayquaza, wake him up so he disrupts them, and they go back and they go run off wherever they hide. Mm-hmm. I, I yeah. like all that. I'm glad you like that. I <laughs> I think that the I think that the I mean there is a reason that you're fighting Team Rocket. They took over Saffron City. I mean, Aqua and Magma do things in this. They take over the sub at one point. They they cause you a lot of problems throughout the game. And I, I just like, think that I think that it makes more sense. I I mean, I think that the story makes more sense if the if if the bad guy, when the bad guys are just are just like I don't know. I just really like I really like Team Rocket uh, as like <laughs> a as just like a sort of like they're like the mob. Like they're they're a more right. they're a more realistic like. Probably like because they are, <laughs> yes. you know, if you just see As Giovanni, opposed, he's literally the mafia. Right, right, right. Like, I, I really like and I really like that. I, I just the the Aqua and Magma just it just doesn't maybe it's like a maybe it's like a like a localization issue. But it just I mean, yeah, they're they're idiots, which I, I I mean, I think there's a place for for dumb villains. But it's like, what are they? What are they represent? You know, what are they representing in the real world? Like, are they are they trying to are they trying to say that environmentalists are idiots? I would or, say eco terrorists. Like, e- e- I, I, which just doesn't. I don't know. Ooh, and tough. then, like the way they fight and they're fighting amongst each other, like it's it's a it's a much more abstract, weird concept that doesn't that doesn't earn its weirdness. Okay, I, mean, I get where you're going with that. Like like team like team Pla- like team plasma in in uh, in black and white you know is it's like I mean they're basically the good guys you you know they're they're saying oh you know what you guys are doing is enslaving Pokemon they should you shouldn't you shouldn't be doing that that's uh that's really messed up like it's you know it's a commentary on on the game itself which is you know which is kind of a kind of a neat thing I don't remember I who the villains that. who are the villains in uh. In Sword and Shield. Sword and Shield? Fuck. I streamed that and I forgot. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, that was one that was one that I really like I played through. The problem with short Sword and Shield was I got a physical copy and uh so once and once a I don't know if you know this, but once a once a physical game gets removed from your Switch and gets replaced by Mario Kart, you can never play that game again. <laughs> sure. Because Whatever. Whatever you say, buddy. <laughs> because uh, because Mario Kart has to live there for the rest of for the rest mm. of time. Like if you get a new game, you can put sure. that game in and take Mario Kart out. <laughs> but mm. as soon as somebody wants to play Mario Kart, then the Mario Kart cartridge goes back in. It's mm. the only one that can go back in the Switch after being removed from the Switch. You guys are funny. Interesting. I don't play Switch, so I can't speak. Yeah, it's. I, I mean, it's you know, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a limitation of the Switch. That's why you should have. That's why you should get like a, a switch light or something. So that, that you sounds can have like one. a 
That sounds one like for, a Kendall one for limitation. Mario Kart and one for other games. I disagree. Okay. I'll, I'll go if, with it, if it were a uh, Crash Team Racing card, now there, I would, I would agree. <laughs> but no, Mario Kart now. Crash Team <laughs> Racing, Crash Team Racing, uh, I got it digitally, so it doesn't, it doesn't factor in here. But like I tried, you know, I got the I got the Wii pun or the Switch punching game, the uh Ring Fit? No, the it was um it's like it's boxing, fitness boxing, and I I because I was gonna lose weight and I, I put it in I put it in once and uh and I played I played for a couple days in a row and then and then took it out, put Mario Kart in, and I tried to put it back in. I said, I'm gonna, you know what, I'm gonna put this back in the switch so that I will exercise tomorrow, and I didn't exercise tomorrow. So obviously it's the switch's fault. <laughs> okay. Wow. Other thing I okay. want to say is that oh, with on. this with this gen, they add a few new HMs. Like this is the first game that lets you dive underwater and go up waterfalls. Is this gen? Ugh. I don't care for either, but they're the diving is cool. You can do underwater. I don't know how the hell you survive, but it is cool that it exists yeah. even like You know why it's also very hard to go back to the these generations? Because you have because to of Pokemon. HM, because of fucking HMs. Mm-hmm. Oh, you can beat the game without cut, by the way, I found out. I never yep. got cut. I never got cut either. I don't know <laughs> where the hell it was. I didn't get it. <laughs> See, I got cut because I was just wandering around and found it. But uh, but yeah, you can you can use you don't need cut to beat the game, but you can use it to like skip. There's a bunch of places where you can like skip a bunch of grassy areas. You uh, get it you in Rustboro City. <laughs> so I Which do the... think that this game has too many HMs. Mm hmm. I, I think that I think that that's that I think that rock smash and strength are kind of redundant of each other. Yep. And dive and waterfall. Waterfall is completely unnecessary. They could have just they could have just made it. Yeah. Put the all, point of it is to stop you. Water yeah. HMs. They could have combined them into one. Just yeah. Yeah. There's but too many. There's yeah. Down to stop you to make you have to because you get like you almost get something from every gym. You get something that you can use, and that's the whole idea. So of waterfall. It. I will say I will say dive is so waterfall at least is a physical attack version of surf I think yes I, I use um, it sometimes so like if you're complaining about because one of the big complaints about about HMs is and I like HMs just I just want to say this I I I freaking I forget how I forget how they did it in Sword and Shield but I hated how they did it in Sun Moon. I, like, pref- I prefer the sun and moon approach of just I, I hate getting it. the those uh those Pokemon to to like break it, the Taurus to break it, the the boulders or a Sharpedo to go across the water. I prefer right. it, that method. It, it breaks the it breaks the world for me when that when with that though because it's like if I can if I can either I I don't totally understand what the what the mechanics of it is so. Oh, do you have oh, the Pokemon oh, with you, or are you summoning the Pokemon from someplace else? It sounds does. like a like an Uber, I guess. And, and if you and if you can summon a Pokemon from someplace else, then it Wait. breaks the it breaks the world of only being able to have six Pokemon with. You. Hey, let because me because if you can summon a Pokemon to break a boulder, you should be able to summon a Pokemon to make sure that you don't get killed. Yeah, but they're they are rentals. They're not. I don't know. <laughs> right, but the technology still. I, I understand. I just yeah, don't that's think that's about where Pokemon that's where the games in the real world. That's, that's where the. That's, but I'm just saying that's 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 where the world breaks for me. No, I don't um, think about that stuff. Also, let me tell you something uh, before we proceed because this is gonna break you probably more. In Pokemon Brilliant Diamond, what they do to replace the HMs is that the Pocket Watch is supposed to like be the the thing that they modify each time to give you the different powers. To uh, that are tuned to the HM. Don't ask me how that works because I haven't gotten too far along. See, that makes more sense to me than that makes no sense makes, to me. So, for you to have a for you to have a gadget that will that I don't will know how it works. I haven't you? I haven't seen it in action yet because yeah, I, I mean I don't know I don't remember how they did it in in Sword and Shield, but it didn't. But whatever they did in Sword and Shield, I was okay with. I really don't remember. Um, I want I want to play that game again just but uh, but like. I, I, I I, le- I really like I really like HMs. I think it's a really elegant solution, and I I just have I think that it it if you go overboard with them, that's when you have problems. You know, Flash should not be an HM. Yeah, that um, shouldn't exist. No. Nope. Yeah, Flash is 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 a and and like I think in some versions in some versions Rock Smash is just a, a TM. Yeah. Yes. Because because being in a situation because making it so that you 
not only not only do you have to use a move, but also it's a move that can never be forgotten. Kind of it it, it does it does make the game a little bit awkward, but like most of the time you can find a Pokemon. To, I mean, you always you always have you should always have a a, a bird that can fly and fly is a good enough attack. Mm-hmm. And you should always have a water type that can surf and surf yep. is a good enough attack. Cut cut and strength like they're fine. You, you know, it doesn't hurt to have a not quite as strong attack on one of your Pokemon or you can have an HM slave if you want. If you want to have somebody who's somebody whose job it, is, it doesn't it doesn't you know because that's basically like having a five person team and using ride Pokemon. Like if if that's if that's what you really want. Like I don't know. I, 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 it makes the game feel more real to me when my, when I'm using my Pokemon who I'm supposed to be friends with and, you know, we, and they're doing me favors if I'm using my Pokemon for things other than cockfights. Hmm. And yeah, I also just don't, I, and yeah, I just don't, I don't like the way they did it. <laughs> there were a lot of things about Sun Moon. That's the only generation that I've, that I could not get through. I don't remember. Um, I did beat Sun Moon, but I don't, it's been a long time. I, I I probably will. I'm I'm sure that I'll give it another shot at some point. I know that a lot of people who haven't played seven other generations of of Pokemon uh, like Sun and Moon, and then yeah, like some some people who don't like the old stuff. Because like yeah, I mean for me for me uh, uh, these early Pokemon games are almost perfect games. Like uh, they're I I lo- all the, some of the, a lot of the stuff that people that people don't like are the reasons that I like the game. I like. You know, I like the grinding. I like having to choose. It's it's like almost resource management of like having to choose which attacks. Um, I did like. I I do think that the only being able to carry twenty items in Gen One is a little bit tedious. So I like now that they have now in this Gen where you have key items and you basically can hold as many items as you want. Um, I think that that uh that's a good quality of life thing. And the different bags help too, because you are balls in one bag, berries are in one bag. That all helps too, I think. Uh, now I will say, now I will say one criticism that I have of the game is I feel like this game. And I mean, it does come down. It is similar. It is kind of along the lines of the HMs there's, it suffers from the added complexity of a third generation without some of the later generations, streamlining things and balancing things. So, like status effects are obnoxious in this. Did you oh, guys they're, know they're this? obnoxious in every one, every every <laughs> Pokemon game? Well, but they're I feel like they're way worse in this one because you have because you have the uh, you not only have attacks that do status effects, but you have abilities that you know paralyze your Pokemon if it, if they do an a, a, a an attack that makes contact or or a. Uh, you know, poisons the Pokemon randomly or whatever. So you have a lot. I feel like there's a lot. And then also there's like a lot of moves that do status effects that they've added into this version. But like in Gen 6, electric type Pokemon can't be can't be paralyzed. And I don't know the exact RNG stuff, but like I feel like I feel like they streamlined it so that you don't end up sleeping for like a lot of moves have nowadays, like it's like it puts them to sleep for three turns where like now it's like where within this game, it was like, I, I would just get like, they would just be sleeping and sleeping and sleeping and sleeping. And then moves like hypnosis. Again, I don't know the exact number, random number generator, whatever, but <laughs> it seems like uh, moves like hypnosis or uh confuse ray or supersonic that uh, should be like a lower percentage of hit are would hit me like every time in this. And I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's a, I don't, maybe it's just confirmation bias, but I just felt like the status effect moves were like way, way worse than this. I think that's more of just being affected by what you're playing. I don't think they were worse or anything like that in this, in the nature of this game. I mean, cause you have the berries, you have other things to heal. I mean, they're annoying. I won't disagree with that. <laughs> yeah, that's true too, is I wasn't really using berry. I don't really use berries usually. So that, that makes a difference. And what were you gonna say, Emmanuel? Uh, I'm looking through the what they did for Sword and Shield for the HMs, and apparently it's just that they blocked off areas, and unle- until you beat the gym, they wouldn't let you like pass. I think because I'm I'm not seeing like anything like you know a replacement for it. It's just that there there is no no HM, no part, no uh, partner or whatever. Like, 
I really okay, don't yeah, remember. that makes yeah, that makes sense. I think that I like that a lot better. <laughs> yeah, because if if you were, I'm trying to remember a little bit of Pokemon Sword and Shield because it's been two years now, and I, I God, played it only old? for the stream. Yes, Damn. and I only played it for the stream. So if I remember correctly, there it was more or less just trying to get to become the champion, I guess. Like there wasn't like really that much of a stakes with like a uh, an evil team or whatever. So it was uh, it was like you started from from your little town and you had to beat each other town's gym and then they would let you pass. It, like if you didn't, you know, like in Pokemon Gen One when you went to the Pokemon League and you showed them your badges and they would let you pass. <laughs> I think yes. that it, that it, that it, it might have been like something like that if I remember correctly. Okay, I like that though. I mean, Sword and Shield was Sword and Shield was a really great was a really great experience. I I didn't I, I of playing like it felt like a console experience and that it was like really really like a beautiful game and there was a li- maybe a little bit of a a little bit of a shallow some elements of it that were maybe a little bit shallower but like it was just like it was cool it was cool to play oh yeah much much better than Sun and Moon too like <laughs> I beat Sun and Moon by the way I okay. I I beat Sun and when I first beat Sun, I liked that gen. But then I got Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, and I replayed that again. And mm, no, <laughs> mm, no, no. So I might be making stuff up about the accuracy of some of those moves, but uh, I still think there's something going on there because no, I, I couldn't you find a I couldn't find a I couldn't find a, per, a a change in percentage, but it seemed like something about it something about it was. Uh, more and I mean maybe it was maybe it was that the that some of the traveling like the going from one city to another had more more trainers or more something like there was just like something that was that felt like a little like it was just a little bit harder to get from point A to point B than it is in most versions. And it also may have just been that I was that I was rushing through and I was playing the game wrong. Well, I mean, as I've said this before, but I'll say it like any time like you kind of mentioned too when you're playing for the podcast. Like one thing about the show is that. It it make it, you know, it gives everything that time limit, which sometimes it can be a very interesting thing for people, especially if you're not used to it and you don't know like mm-hmm. the crap that I put I put us through. <laughs> I think I I what was the episode that I was in that I felt like that? I think it was Ratchet and Clank going Commando, right? That I was like that it was also like not super on the game because I had to finish it real fast for for the podcast. I mean, probably. I mean it. I know that this has an effect on people. Like when you do what I do, like I get, oh, yeah. I'm not unaware of what I put people through. <laughs> I mean, it's not just you, Mike, because <laughs> it, it also stresses me out when I'm doing my streams of, of or full playthroughs of games for my streams, which is something that I'm honestly uh, uh, kind of considering because I love doing first strike and, and license the game and all those things where I just play the beginning of the game and I don't have to, keep playing any more of it. I just show you what the game is and maybe I'll play it on my off time, not stream it. Like when I <laughs> when I'm going to stream it, I just feel like there is this time limit. Like I'm streaming, I'm streaming this and if it's October, I only have 4 weeks to beat a, a spooky game before it's November and I have to rush out something else. Like I don't know. I, I it, it's not just you. Just just say. <laughs> no, I get it. It's just the nature of what of what I do, so uh, like that's how I look at it partly too. Yeah, it, it, it's it's that it feels sometimes like work when games shouldn't, but hey, it's what we chose to do anyway. So, no, I mean I get what you mean. I love it personally, but I completely understand where you're coming from. And I just I think there's some games that are that are different than others, and especially if you're going to be if you're going to be critical of aspects of a game, you have to ask yourself if if you would feel the same way if you weren't playing it wrong. I mean, for um, me, I feel when it comes to this game, for example, since that's what we're talking about, yeah. I would have been the same way. I mean, it's just how I am when it comes to Pokemon. Like, I had fun with this game. Like, I got to experience it. But I also cheated. Like, I I gave myself, um, like, 20 Master Balls near the end because I, <laughs> I, I didn't want to deal with catching. Once I beat the Elite Four, I just... Because one thing about me when I play games like this is I have two rules of thumb that I, I have to do every time I play a... A game like the, a Pokemon game, I have to. I want to beat the Elite Four, and I want to capture as many legendaries as I can, just because it's just a thing with me. And like this game, I, I caught Lugia and Ho Oh, which you cannot get in this game unless you che- cheat. <laughs> well, you have to go to Nintendo event. 
which is not possible anymore because you know that days are long gone. Don't you worry. Know, for an example, I I had Cernius and and Ivatel from Pokemon X and Y. So, oh, those Nintendo events only too. Yes. Yeah, you can't get you can't get uh, Xerneas and Evil Tall in Emerald version. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm talking about Alpha Cell. So. Oh man, that would be so that would be so cool to to I think that they somebody could if somebody could like retroactively do eight bit sprites. There's there's mods. Oh, yeah, okay. there are. I I once oh, played yeah. a hack of yeah. Pokemon uh, called Liquid Crystal. Mm-hmm. Which was a yeah. hack, and it had a bunch of stuff like There's that. There's a so, bunch of modded, so like, Pokemon uh, Gen 1, 2, and 3 of, like, but with, like, the newer Pokemon. With, like, it's out there. Just You just got to look for it, you know? So another thing I noticed about this game, and I I, re- I feel very strongly that they that they decided to do this in this game more so uh, than, than later games, is there were a lot of double battles. Yes. Uh, yeah, just because right. that was something that had come out and it would have been introduced in Crystal. So for Gen 3, it was like practice is the first main gen that, that did that. There were a lot of double battles. And I just I don't like double battles as much as some people. <laughs> I get it. I'm not the biggest fan of them either, especially when you're your Pokemon are not prepared for it and you're not prepared for it. Like, I get Boy. it. I don't know. Was in in the Emerald version, was there a part where you had to fight sick Mighty Anna at the same time? I don't think so. No. Okay, so in Alpha Sapphire, there's one point where you go to Team Aqua's base, and there's like six of the same Team Aqua grunts, exactly the same model. Oh yeah, that's of them. yeah, that's that's in that's in uh, that's in this. Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah, and they throw out six Mighty Anna. You have to fight them all at the same time. And for some reason, I think <clears throat> that I I or you use... fight them you fight them back to back. You don't. You don't fight oh no! Them. In Alpha Sapphire, they just throw him out all at once, and you have to fight. Right. It's, it's right. All well, the you're playing six. a different gen. Yeah, all, it's all Gen six. six, and that's yeah. a horde. That's a horde encounter. Yeah, that's a whole different. Oh thing right, I day. forgot about horde encounters in Pokemon X and Y. Uh, I yeah. never. I mean, part of like what I do with the show, I'm just trying to go back and play like some of the Pokemon games because they're not the, they're they're a little hard to record about because they're just it's just the nature of the of what we're talking about. Yeah, I mean, it, it's just. <laughs> It's just you start in a little town. You keep beating uh, gyms, battling the evil bad guys, winning the Pokemon League. Hooray! Like that's that's the short end of the uh, uh, the, the short version of it. Yes. of what you're doing. So. You're not wrong. <laughs> I, I know, but I mean, you can you can go into you can go into. I mean, we're you know we're talking about things that are specific to this generation. I mean, Gen Three has the issue of it being. I didn't notice it this time around as much, but like uh, Gen Three gets a lot of criticism for having a lot of uh, a lot of surfing. Well, this one did, yeah. I do, I don't mind the surfing that much. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I feel like I didn't I didn't notice it as much in this one as I as as I as I have in my playthroughs of of Ruby. But uh, but that's you know that's something, and it is a lot of tentacles. It's like why why can't <laughs> they find true. another? I mean, I guess they have. You get the seagull. The wingall that you run into mm-hmm. on the water, but other than but other than that, it's like why can't they? You do fight a lot of tentacles. Why can't you know, why can't it be Whalmer? Now that's a kick ass. Oh, so water, since you water opened that door, so one of the <laughs> oh. things about this game, like because all the Pokemon games always have a three legendary type, like this one has a three golems. In order to get the three golems to even spawn in the game, you have to catch a a Whalmer and then level up a way more to level forty. You get a way Lord. Put him in mm-hmm. your and then you ha- put him in your party. Then you also have to c- catch a Relicamp, which is a fish that's hard to find. You have to dive underwater in certain places to find it. You put to put both of those in your party. Go to a random little pool where you can dive in. It's in a place with a heavy current. So you have to come from a certain section and like swim towards it. You have to then dive, go inside this temple, and have both po- one Pokemon in the first slot, one Pokemon in the last slot, and then read the Braille, which you can't read. And then it will open it. Do- and then the golems will then spread around the world. And you have to go to three different spots and find caves that are now on the game to get these golems. I really don't remember me having to do any of that to actually get the golems. You do. I I went in and po- did it for in this. Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire. I just found uh, the caves where they were, and they, there they were. Well, I you think. weren't playing. I'm ta- You weren't playing Gen three though. No, no, no. I didn't do it this time. I'm talking about years ago, oh. in 2003, when the games came out. When, you didn't have a choice. Uh, That's Ruby the only way to get them. There is no other way but doing that stupid thing to get Reggie, Reggie Ew. Rock, Reggie Steel. Reggie. Unless they're different I... in, in in Ruby or Sapphire. I don't think they are, but I didn't look it up. 
because all three of them are in this one. The other thing that's special about Emerald, you can get Deoxys, Ho-Oh, and Lugia, but you need special items. Mew is also in this game, too, but you need special items. So, mm, cool. Nintendo event items that you can't get unless you were Nintendo event or have Game Shark like I did. I mean, I mean, I don't know. I, uh, I think, I think those legendaries that you have to jump through 75 hoops to get to get to i think that's kind of a cool thing it kind of is very reminiscent of it's very reminiscent of the old uh go through the whole game without having cut and then (laughs) go and then surf and then surf uh at the ssan and then use strength on the truck like is is there was just stupidity that i went through the game without the SS and like or not yes and but going through without cut that wasn't the game trying to be like oh the game's gonna be cool it was just me being stupid well no I mean so but the but the but the playground rumor was that if you go through the whole game without using cut and then you and then you you use strength on the truck and then there's a mew on oh you talking about the original game in the okay. yeah in the first yeah in the first uh, in in Gen one yeah, so sure. have in the later generations when there are actual like weird thing weird hoops that you have to jump through that sound like that you know that you have to catch you have to catch Wilmer and whatever and it, it go to this one plot of land and then release them and then they go to the different places like all the you know you have to i i looked up i get where you're for, going yes for the for alpha omega ruby sapphire um when i played through i i did get a bunch of the uh a bunch of the legendaries that's that's one of the really good things about Alpha Omega Ruby Sapphire is there are a ton of legendaries you can get. And like you literally it's like you, some of them you can only get on Tuesdays. <laughs> like like it's 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 crazy all the all the hoops that you have to jump through to get them and uh and and it's uh you know just a lot of um you know again if this is if this is if this game is your way of life, you know, if if this is if this is the game that you're playing for 6 months and you're going to and you're just and you're trying to do you know you're going to play through the the initial you know the initial storyline and then you're going to beat the elite 4 a million times until your pokemon are all level 100 and you're going to try to catch you know hundreds and hundreds of pokemon and you're going to try to do all that yep yeah, give give me some give me some post game content that's that's crazy and you have to jump through hoops well Speaking of post game content, I don't think any of us have actually played it, but this Pokemon Emerald's the first game to introduce something called the Battle Frontier. Um, you were saying, Emmanuel, have you ever tried it before? I think I tried it back when I played Emerald uh, ten years ago. Okay, but I barely remember it. Like it's really, really long. <laughs> <laughs> it, what, what what Battle Frontier is is a special place you go to in the end of the game where the poke where you go and you enter different like arenas like you enter a Viper arena where you fight trainer after trainer after trainer and you're supposed to win like fifty fights in a row or some insane number of that hmm. and then if you do that then you get to, then you get a chance to fight the the leader of these things and you get no experience in these places either you only get a BP or battle point. Okay, so this is one of those, and it, level, it flattens out your Pokemon's level too, right? No, whatever okay. your highest level Pokemon is, that's what you're fighting. Okay, okay, yeah, I think the equivalents in the in later generations, they if your Pokemon were over level fifty, they would they would uh, flatten out all your Pokemon to be level fifty, so yeah. that it it kind of it doesn't. Which so be this, so it sounds like this, this is one, this is similar to that because it it scales with the level of your Pokemon. So. Yes. So I, I didn't do it because I just didn't care. I was trying to level up and do it, and I'm just like, I don't care anymore. I'm just ready to be done with this game. But it is, uh, if you're, yeah. it's cool that it's there. Like, I'm happy that it's there in the game. I didn't have to do it. I didn't have to mess with it. But it has, like, six different arenas you go into, and this is where you can fight, like, a lot of really challenging Pokemon. You fight all the legendary birds. You fight all legendary dogs. Some of the trainers will have them. Like, you'll fight Pokemon that aren't in this game normally, and it, it's, it's where you go if you really want to finish the game. But I didn't. But it's there. It's cool that it's there as a as a final th- content for people who just want to keep playing their game because they only get one game every six yeah, months. Yeah, I think I think a lot of times these these third versions or the or the remake will have some really good post game content. And uh, yes, yeah, it sounds like it sounds like this is an example of that. Yeah, I actually yes. really like post game content. I mean, normally, like I like the fact that Pokemon had this, even though I'll never play it and have no interest in it. I'm happy it exists. Still not as good as Pokemon Crystal with going back to the Kanto region. No, that's because Crystal's one of the best games in the series, I think. Mm-hmm. 
you know, I haven't played it in years, but I think it's probably one of the best. Which is the one that there's one of, there's one where you actually where you can play like a bunch of gym leaders. Like there's a Bosch rush of gym gym leaders. I can't remember which which one which generation that is, but it's one. Of, I think it's one of the ones that I haven't played. Like it might be uh, you might you be can Soul, Soul, fight gold Soul Silver in this game because they'll call you because they are the Pokenov system. Oh my god, I hate the Pokenov system too. so much. So trainers will randomly call you like, hey, I just caught this Pokemon. What do you think? And I'm like, fuck you. Hang up the phone. I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> That's how I felt. Wait, was that in this one? Yes. Okay, I didn't get any of that. Or I just ignored it because it was on the small screen on, on the no, 3DS. It's, so. Yeah, no, it's not on. I, I don't think I don't think they have Pokenav in the in the in good in Alpha Omega Ruby Sapphire. Good. You don't need it. You played the wrong Pokemon game for this show, sir. Ah, oh, thank God. <laughs> Uh, no, it's great. I mean, Emerald is a Emerald is a good one. Um, it is a good I game. would say it's, it's. It's. I'm not digging at Emerald. To be clear. It, so something else. Something else about Gen Three that I really like is it does strike the balance in some ways. So it's obviously it's it's halfway in between or not halfway in between, but like it's it's in between the old games and the new games, right? It's the last. You know, it's the it's the Game Boy Advance game, which is. You know, which is in between Game Boy and and DS, and of course now we have Switch games, which are you know their own their own thing. But it's got some of the added. I like. I I, I think it's interesting how it has some of the added complexity and 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 some some minor quality of life improvements like the running shoes and stuff. But it still feels like an old school game. Like I I feel like the you know the DS games. They have even even the even before they before they make the full blown jump to 3D, like they've got like a a little bit of a like a 2.5D look to them that that I don't have the that I don't have that kind of nostalgia for. But the uh, this sort of 16 bit look of uh, that really almost looks like it. It, lo- it almost I mean this game looks more 8 bit than 16 bit. It's like your memory of 8 bit. Mm, you know? I just I I think this game looks good still. Like we haven't really talked about the graphics, I think hold up just fine for this title. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Is it's a beautiful game, yes. that's, but yeah, it, that's but what it doesn't look saying. like okay. it doesn't look like a. I don't feel like it looks like a set. Uh, it looks like your memory of an NES game. Like it looks like Super Mario Three. You it gotta remember like, that the it doesn't GBA, look like uh, Sonic. Yeah, you, you gotta remember that the GBA was also I mean like way more to be like a Super NES portable. So that's right, why. Right. It, yeah, it, it it's, also has it's, like that. Yeah, and I think it actually is more powerful than the Super NES by, oh, yes. by a little oh, yeah. bit. Oh yeah. Um, it was, yes. But but this but these games but these games in particular, I feel like they look like like if somebody was gonna make a a throwback Pokemon game, uh however a, a number bit Pokemon game, it would look <laughs> like this. You, you know, if you were if you were trying to make a pix, pixelated Pokemon game, it would look like this. It wouldn't look like it wouldn't look like the Game Boy games, and it wouldn't look like the the DS games. Like this is, it it pinches the nostalgia nerves while still looking a little. Oh bit yeah, no, there's a hundred percent ROM hacks that look just like this, no question. I mean, and I, I, and I think that's interesting, and I, I I don't know. It's uh, especially like if you're if 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 it's people who are my age who played Gen One, and then maybe they got back into it in a later gen. I think that this uh, this this generation definitely deserves a, a deserves a chance, and it's just like uh, you know, you ever listening to you ever you know you discover you discover a band and you listen to like most of their albums, and then you and then you realize that and, and maybe you missed a couple and you missed one, and it's like as good as all the other ones. You know, I, I'm a big Bob Dylan guy, and I didn't I didn't listen I didn't hear Desire until like a couple years ago. And it was like, whoa, this is this is every bit as good as Blood on the Tracks and Highway 61 Revisited. You know, this is every bit as good as his best stuff. But I've but I missed this somehow, you know, just because there are, you know, just because he's been making music for 50 years. You know, we've had Pokemon games for 25 years now. (laughs) This Um, is an interesting conversation. (laughs) Some sometimes you're going to sometimes you're going to miss one. And you go back to it, and it's like, oh wow, this is there's a whole other game that I haven't played. Oh, I also want to say, like, the game does a good job of locking things up around you at times. Like, for example, where I'm going with this, 
is like to get to some of like the last gym, you have to go and get, get you know, stop, get Rayquaza or wake them up and do stuff like that because you have to stop them from fighting. Like it does a good job of making you have to do unique things as the game progresses in order for you to beat it. I like that style of that. So how it locks everything up pretty well with some, you know, a story with story beats. I thought that was good. I thought that was well done. Um, I'm trying to think, and oh, one of the other Pokemon that is that I also use in my team, which is new to this game, is I really like Trophius. He's a flying, looks like a dinosaur flying grass Pokemon, which is odd, but he's one of my favorites. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know why. He's always been one of my favorites, though, in this game. Yeah, yeah he's cool. Not super useful. Interesting, but. interesting type. I like he's. I like him for two reasons. Interest, uh, fly, grass flying is an interesting type. Yes. Type yeah. combination, and also when you're going, when you're playing, fighting against it. You look at it, and this is a big thing about good Pokemon design. I think you should be able to look at a Pokemon and figure out what its typing is. Yep. And and so you look at that, and you're like, those are those are leaves on its wings. It is going to be it, this thing is it has is wings made of leaves. That means it is <laughs> grass flying. That means that flamethrower is a good attack to use against it. I feel like there's some there's some that it's like. Especially like when you get into to like normal and psychic types, it's like this guy is he all of his moves are psychic type. And uh, and so, OK, so I assume he must be psychic. And then you use a move against him and it's like, <laughs> no, actually, he's a uh, he's dark type or he's actually normal type or he's fighting type or something like it just doesn't even like doesn't even make sense on the mm-hmm. circle. So I really yeah, I do. I do like that. Tropius is very clear on its typing. It has good Pokemon in, in this game. I mean, and also you don't get the national Pokedex till after you beat the Elite Four, which I think is a normal thing. And then you're then able to go and get some of the old Pokemon that you might that you didn't get in the game before. Are any last things? I think we're kind of covered most of this game. Some things that you guys still want to cover that we haven't covered. I can't talk about the music because I played this game entirely muted because this is a time two speed, so music sounds terrible. So I guess the music's pretty what generic Pokemon music. Yeah, I, I, I didn't listen to the music. I never listened to the music okay. in my Pokemon. I, I am starting to become Mike Alberton and just playing games without listening to music at all. Well, so nothing wrong. The podcasts like... that I listened to while I was playing this game were not very good. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> Hopefully, it wasn't games my mom found that you didn't enjoy. Damn. No, I don't. I don't. I don't listen to games my mom found. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> I know. I always, so, well, the thing is, okay. So the thing is, I, I don't. I don't like listening to uh, reviews of, of or or analysis. I don't even think that games my mom found is a, is reviews. I think it's more analysis. Yeah, it's of, more analysis of, uh, of of games that I haven't played and that I'm probably never going to play. So so I I can't. It's not a podcast that I can listen to every episode of. No one does. And then and so then I need to go back and listen to because you do your. Sometimes you do your movie reviews or you do your top tens or or whatever, and those yes. are good. Those are good episodes, but I don't think of it. And then uh, other stuff happens, and I don't know. I'm a bad person, is what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm a bad friend. It's okay. I only listen to your movie reviews, and I listen to all those though. Those I, pr- I really appreciate you listening to to the to the movie reviews. To I, I appreciate to anybody that listens to any podcast. I don't need to hear Dune again at all. By the way, uh, yeah, I heard well, two episodes of Dune by you. I'm good. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm good there too. I mean, hopefully, hopefully, we're still doing the podcast when the next Dune movie comes out, and I'm sure that we'll have to talk about it. Um, but, um, <laughs> but yeah. All right, before Emmanuel, any last things you want to say about Pokemon Emerald? I'm going to go on to questions. You mean Alpha Sapphire? No, <laughs> <laughs> I know you didn't play the right one because you're mean. Hey, it's a Gen Three. What? It was all about just playing Gen Three, right? Right. Well, you technically didn't play Gen Three. Yeah, I played that's a Gen, Gen Six game. I played Gen Three, but it was recoded. So, <laughs> all right. It's, I, yeah, I feel like. Yeah. Well, I feel like the thing is, the thing is, the Alpha and Omega Ruby Sapphire were very different games. Like yeah. it wasn't just that; it was just that the graphics upgraded. And I mean, whatever. I we, we still had a good conversation, but uh, but like <laughs> I would say, I would say, I mean, and I mean, you can you can confirm this because you played it more recently. I mean, the Gen the Gen Six remakes of the Gen Three games are very good and very playable. If you don't like, you know, the classic stuff, it's it's a very good. It, 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 but you want to experience the story. The if you want to experience the really bad story, 
then yes. I mean that's definitely a a modern option. Or if yes. you like, mm. or if you liked X and Y, it's the same thing as X and Y, but with a different map, which you know is is uh, is is worth. It's definitely worth checking out, and it's available. Unlike unlike this, if you don't want to, <laughs> if you don't want to emulate. I mean, Pokemon is one of those series where they never re- they don't really re- release stuff enough, as we said earlier. Yeah, I I really I really would love. And I've said every time I do a podcast about Pokemon, what I think they need to do is they need to do a Pokemon Generations game where each city is designed in the in the style of a different generation. We've got more than we've got more than eight now. So you could do like the first eight as so you do like, you know, like a Game Boy style game and then and then a Game Boy Color and then a Game Boy Advance. It's weird like that. Nintendo. I look, I mean. I mean, they Nintendo has. There's a mix of of in Mario Odyssey. There's a mix of 2D and 3D stuff. I mean, yeah, but Nintendo that's new will game. do Nintendo that's, will do cool stuff. That's Mario, the crown <laughs> jewel of Nintendo. You and think, Pokemon think, is better than Mario. Uh, Nintendo doesn't agree with it. Yeah. yeah well, yeah, but as much care. as I want the Legend of Zelda to be the the flagship of Nintendo, it's never gonna be because it's Mario. Yes. Well then, well then, well then, Pokemon should have more freedom. Pokemon should be on the PlayStation so that I could platinum it. That's what oh, it should. God. Then you yeah, would have played want, Emerald. I yeah. The, I don't want Pokemon on a non-Nintendo platform, but but I would really like, <laughs> I would really like something. I mean, because because Nintendo does what Nintendo does is Genesis that they are Duck. super self-indulgent with their with their nostalgia and past and all that stuff. And I wish that I wish that they would do more self-indulgent nostalgia bait with pokemon and and that means and that means uh not just cutesy modern remakes but stuff that's you know re- remixed 8-bit versions of things and uh and also just make it so that this is available the the gen 3 is available i would play you're hoping for would, things that will never happen i don't know i don't know maybe, i think maybe we in could three get, year. no you at know some if, point, if, at some point game boy advance games will be available on in in some form or another, because they Game are. Boy Advance games are good. I'm playing what I'm playing Advance Wars right now. It's available. I'm not uh, playing on a GBA. No, <laughs> on a Nintendo <laughs> console. Okay. That's, oh, that's they will cool. have a, they will have another official release. Okay. I, I, at some point, Game Boy Advance games will. And Pokemon is is second party. It's it's easy. You know, the licensing is there and everything. There there will be a way to there will be a way to play this officially. It um, it'll happen on the Switch too. Don't worry. And I mean, I mean, because and I don't and I don't just I mean, I don't just want to play it officially because I because I because I am, am averse to emulation. I'm not averse to emulation, but I don't really like playing games on my computer. I don't really like playing games on my Raspberry Pi, for that matter. It's a little bit better, but I really like playing games on my switch and um, I'm not going to hack my switch to be able to play an emulator on it. I don't even know if you can do that, but okay. I'm not I mean, get, I'm not sure. going to do that. If you are not completely averse to emulation, just wait for the Steam Deck, and then you can play them on the <laughs> on a on a Switch like engine, you know. Yeah. For like, well, for, I I don't know. The Steam Decks are expensive. Uh, I mean, so are Switches. Yeah, but I have but, a Switch, okay. and Steam Deck is like three times as expensive as Switch if it's you can get one, which they don't exist. It's <laughs> not. They are. Let me. The Isn't price the cheapest are, one five ninety nine? No, it's like four hundred. Yeah, I really want a Steam Deck, by the way, because I wanted one until I finally got a GPU. So uh, I mean, I'm not gonna get one because I'd rather get Steam Deck. Oh, Where are you, Steam Deck? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go on to questions, memories, or comments. I got th- a whole three to read, so I'm gonna start with from the nice. Game Boy Paradise group from Austin Kemp trying to get the rocket to take off to catch the Oxus. I don't know how you do that, because when I did, I just put in a cheat code where I just warped to his island and went and got him. Uh, you can only do it through a Nintendo event, so you have to get a special item to get the rocket to launch to get the Oxus, so that's uh, it's not in the regular game. Uh, from Brandon Bellin, there's a glitch to clone your Pokemon legitimately, legitimately in the Battle Frontier. Gen 3 will always be the best. I don't if you're If you're cloning something, I'm pretty sure it's not, you know, legit there. And last comment from the official Laser Time community. J. Alberto P-, P-, P. This is the generation I started to EV train. The enemies at the battle tower had both EV train and IV bred Pokemon. I found IV breeding the tedious, and so I made the challenges more difficult than they need to be. At that point, where you competitively breeding, frustrating all my friends played Pokemon, only three of us actually did the work. I will never 
never play the game like that where you're actually like, oh, look at this guy's IV. He's, he's yeah, I, I, I've never played them like that. That's, That's too hard. So I got really into IV and EV training in Gen 6 and uh, and like bred up a team and did all the things. And and uh, it took like 80 hours and like it was just like weeks and weeks of, of spending just all weekend just riding my bicycle back and forth. And you then I would, in shape, though, right? Then I would. Play, <laughs> yeah, I, I get I get what you're saying. I know. Then I would then no I would joke. play people online and their first Pokemon would kill all my Pokemon or I played in a, and I played in a, uh, like a, like a, like I even played in like a tournament that was organized by like a podcast and, and it, and yeah, I just, and I just got my, got my butt kicked. Cause, cause you don't only have to do, cause it's not only that you have to EV and EV train and IV breed your, your Pokemon. You also have to like figure out the absolute best move sets and the only way that, and if you have an idea for a move set, you either have to play like you know one of the like simulators online, which I don't, you know, again, I'm 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 a I'm a little bit I'm a little bit averse to playing unofficial releases of stuff, <coughs> or you have to spend you know 20 hours breeding this perfect Pokemon, and then you and you fight, and you're like, actually, flamethrower wasn't a good move. Guess I got to start over. Yeah, fuck no. And 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 they're mm-hmm. like, no, you need to you need to have rapid. If you're gonna play, if you're gonna play Tentacle, you it needs to know rapid spin. So was this the Gen that started move. IV and breeding and all that bullshit? I think it's I think it exists in Gen two. Yeah, you could breed Pokemon in Gen two. Okay, that much I know. But, but it's it's actually like it's actually doable in Gen six. And, I, I, and uh, the but the problem is because it's doable. If you if you breed in Gen five, you get like one or two perfect IVs and you're happy. If you breed in Gen six, you need five of your six IVs to be perfect. Usually, you don't need your. It's either special attack or special defense or or or, uh, or regular attack. You don't do both. You don't need to have both. Yeah. For them to be perfect, because you're never gonna actually you're never gonna actually uh, use both in your move sets. But um. I don't know. It was it was an interesting little corner. I kind of wish that there was more like with online with any kind of online multiplayer kind of stuff. There's always a. I like it better when there are more bad players playing. <laughs> so, I mean, that makes sense. Well, well, like I just I like you know I like being able to play. You want to win? I want to. Yeah, I want to. I want to be able to stand a chance at winning or win often enough that I can that I can get better basically like that i if if you go if you go in and you're not absolutely perfect and then you just get wiped out every single time and that's the only way that you can play is against people who have who who have been you know who have dedicated their lives to this then then it's it's just not enjoyable whereas like if you have something that's maybe a little bit where that kind of where that portion of the game where the online multiplayer is a little bit more popular then you're going to be more likely to have people who are just random p- random is trying at trying it out um, you're not gonna have experts yeah and it's it's well you're gonna have experts but you're not it's not gonna be only experts yeah I get and maybe you're and i mean maybe also if if uh if if pokemon i mean i haven't played the last couple generations online so they may have introduced this but because i know they've introduced it for like mario kart but like if you're if your quality if, if there was a matching system where it was matching you up against people who were at at a similar skill level to you I think that that would also help, okay. but yeah, I don't have, I'm, I'm, but that's not what I'm there for. I'm not, I'm there for, there's enough version. There's enough Pokemon versions that I can enjoy a single player experience, you know, once every couple months spent, uh, put it in and, you know, pick a version and play through the, play through the campaign, you know, think about, you know, Oh, I've never, I've never used, you know, I've never used uh camera up on my team before. Wonder what that would be like. You know, kind of, kind of thing. I've, I've never, or, or let's try to, let's try to do a run of all water types, <laughs> or let's try to do a run of, uh, you know, X, this or that or the other. You know, only this generation, it, yeah. it, you know, that's 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 enough for me with Pokemon. I don't, I don't need to do that. I get it. I can't play super exact Pokemon. I never will. Not my way of playing Pokemon. It's not the way I enjoyed this game. Yeah, no. I just enjoy going through getting my eight badges. That's just how I play Pokemon. And I had, and to me, to play it like that, the game was well worth it for this playthrough. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
Right, right, right. Yeah, it's yeah, uh, totally. So, um, so let's go to shelf stacker box. I think. I think that's where we're at now. Sure. <laughs> After this long, and Emmanuel, wait, why don't you go wait, first? There's a third one yeah. now. Yeah, I added. Well, it's been a while, hasn't it? A uh, stack is where something you like, but it's not like you don't want them on the shelf. You don't want to advertise it, but you still might go back and play it again. Okay. Emmanuel, um, what about you? Okay, so this is kind of gonna be a spoiler, probably for every other generation. If you ever have me for any other Pokemon <laughs> oh, no. game, but oh, di- Pokemon. But this game, the, but I, this game, and every other generation, despite it, their shortcomings, I I would put all of them in in the shelf. Or uh, right, shelf is the yeah shelf. The shelf. The shelf. Top. Yep. Yeah, this on display. I literally have right now my EV plush with a, a copy of Pokemon Let's Go EV, Pokemon Sword, and Pokemon Brilliant Diamond on display right now on my shelf. If I had a bigger space, I would have the other games that I have, like Pokemon Alpha Sapphire, Omega Ruby, Sun and Moon, Ultra Sun and Moon, yada yada yada. So you yeah, just made me think of that meme from Fairly Odd Parents. This is where I put it. If I had one, <laughs> okay. If I had more space, this is what I put it. <laughs> so, so I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to really throw a curveball here, Mike. Sure. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm not going to say shelf or stack or Bach. I'm going to say console. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this, if mm. I had, a, if I had a cartridge and I had the GBA, this game would, this game would stay in the console all the time, forever. Okay. okay. But, um, but a, I, a better question. If it were on the Switch. Would you let me look for the image here? Uh, give me a second here. Where is it? <laughs> please have the chat open so that you can see the image, please. Oh, okay. Would you for all say, you listening at home, you can't see a thing he's posting. Just to let you know. Would you say that you would put it on the switch? Yes, I would put it on the switch. Okay. Thank um, you. but yeah, I would but like this is the thing about the thing about this is there's not I mean, I, I don't have it. I've never I don't have a Game Boy Advance. Uh, but I played some Game Boy Advance games, and uh, this is, it's hard to say if this is better than uh, Fire Red, or if it's, or if it's better than uh, Omega, or, or, or Ruby Sapphire, for sure. But those would be the only games that would even com- contend as far as Game Boy Advance games. And this is definitely the most interesting that probably has the most, like, replayability and post-game content of all of those. So yeah, it, it's gonna stay in my console, which okay. which means which which if I'm not allowed to do that means shell, okay. because I'm gonna put the console on the shelf exactly. because you are not but, allowed. But yes, yeah. But, but I do wanna I do wanna you know I do Permission wanna uh, denied. I do wanna I do wanna <laughs> like yeah. emphasize that that is a, that that is a thing you know because because for me console gaming a lot of it is about the game that stays in the console for months and months and months you know if that's if that's you know and usually that's a Pokemon game. You know, for the Switch, it's Mario Kart. For you know, for the Xbox, it's Skyrim. For the Wii U, it's Zelda Breath of the Wild. Even though I haven't played Zelda Breath of the Wild, but but <laughs> it's the Wii U. It's not did, a whole lot of options. I did put the disc in oh, and played for God. like an hour, and then I got a Switch. But this it's still, a very but still, it, it lives. It lives in the console. Uh, for Nintendo sixty four, uh, that's a hard. That's a harder one. It's probably Goldeneye, but but that's a harder one. And then for for the the Nintendo, Super Nintendo, and Sega Genesis. Those are those are also. I don't, I don't know. I play too many games, but uh, <laughs> but for but for the Game Boy Advance, I would say that Pokemon Emerald metaphorically lives in the lives in the console. Okay. Oh, and I'll go last. I'm gonna put this in the stack. I, it's not something I really want to put on the shelf because I honestly don't really want to play it again. I've beaten it twice now. I have enjoyed it. It was fun. It's a it's a good game, but. I, I don't really want to bo- box it because it's a good game, but I don't want to play it again, so it's going to go in the stack, and maybe someday I'll... But yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I just can't put it in the boxes. It's too good. Interesting. I know, and I didn't really know what to say. So where is this, where where does the stack stay, then? If it's if it's not on a I shelf... It, it, goes, it's not it's not in a goes in the box, then we're going to play it again. There we go. No, 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 no. Okay, I, I want to explain the stack. My, my explanation of the stack is... And I don't know. This might not be the, the explanation of the stack. To oh, me, I, like right now, I am looking at the shelf and I have a bunch of games stacked, like one alongside the other, like if it were a goddamn GameStop. So the stack, <laughs> that is the stack. To, that is the stack. Like shelf, shelf is when mm. you have a dedicated place, like it's a almost a sanctuary, like like where you put a... a 
a, a, a Pokemon scented candle or something, you know, and you put it, put her there <laughs> and all that shit, you know. <laughs> You're not wrong. I think that's what we might have been going for. I mean, Mike was the one that came up with the the stack, but it's been a while, so I don't even and, remember. And what now I'm giving you, I'm giving you the purpose of the stack. I'll take it. See? Well, I challenge you. I challenge you to to, to think a about a to a duel. To Come think on. about what would your console game be for for various systems, like just for future episodes. Like if if you're playing a game and you're like, this is this is the game that would live in my console if it as it sat connected to my TV after I stopped playing this console regularly. What would you know? What would the one game that would that would stay there? Whether I play it or not, but like it would just be it would be the last <laughs> game that I played there, <laughs> and then like maybe I would re, re or or if or if I revisited one game, it would be this one game. Think about I would challenge you to think about that for for future episodes if you ever run okay. into a game like that. Yeah, maybe we'll see. That's a good idea though. Um, Emmanuel, where can people find you at? Twitch.tv slash Commander Lionheart or YouTube.com slash Commander Lionheart. Okay, and Kendall, where can people find you at? Uh, so I'm at um. Uh, Lots of different places on the internet, but the easiest place to find me is at kendallcast.ninja or the Kendallcast feed on iTunes or the podcatcher of your choice. Some podcasts that I do include uh, the Kendallcast Poll List, which is a comic book uh, podcast. We're talking about the Marvel Comics Civil War event uh, right now. We've got That's What We Called Music with a question mark, which is a song by song review of the Now That's What That's What I Called Music catalog. We've got the Kendall Cast Movie Roundtable, which is a monthly uh, movie review show where we review classic movies. You know, basically, if if you if you find me if you find me listenable, go over to Kendall Cast, look through and find something that sounds interesting, and uh, and 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 give it give it a listen. Just a warning: there's also some Star Wars customizable card game content on there. It's definitely very inside baseball. So, I try to listen uh, to it. I cannot. So, 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 you know, if you don't know, if you're, if you're not a player of the custom of the Star Wars customizable card game, um, you may or may not, uh, you may or may want, you may or may not want to skip those episodes, but otherwise, uh, most of the rest of the stuff is pretty accessible. You know, if we're uh, like games, my mom found, I think our reviews are more, are, are more in the area of analysis over reviews. So, you know, if there's a movie that we review, then expect, then maybe watch the movie before listening to it. But, you know, people have seen The Shining. People have seen uh, Citizen Kane. People have seen David Lynch's Dune. I've never seen, I've only seen one of the three movies you just mentioned. I have never seen any of those. So, That's well, a, watch um, Citizen Kane which, if you haven't. I which, would recommend, I would recommend Citizen Kane. Which uh, I forgot to mention that we are also doing something similar, which is called Mystery Movie Friends, where me and, <laughs> To a bunch of goobers sit down to talk about old movies, specifically ones that I have never seen because I'm not that big of a movie guy. Last, The last one we saw as of this recording was Die Hard, which I had never seen. And if you want to know what the hell I thought about it, uh, you can go uh, listen I, to it. I will, watch say, it. I will say Citizen Kane is better than Die Hard. Those are big words. And I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to give away <laughs> what I thought about it with that. <laughs> uh, all right and since i have forgot to do it early in the episode i'm gonna do it now i'm gonna give you that steam code giveaway because i really don't feel like plugging it in somewhere else at a later time because that's too lazy so here you can have the code for postal 2 the steam code it is 6 o l t 9 b 5 5 5 e d 4 j t 9 that is the code for postal 2 so somebody out there just got postal too, hopefully, if you want it, it's there. And a couple of things I need to say to wrap up this episode. If you and we actually have covered a, cu- a couple other Pokemon episodes. So if you're in the mood for more Pokemon, I'm going to list those for you, too. And then I'll tell you what we're playing next week because I almost forgot to do that. So <laughs> that kind of day, I think. Mm-hmm. Just got to get it to work. All right. So the other episode we've done, we did Pokemon Snap, episode 83, Pokemon Trading Card Game, episode 15. And I know we covered Pokemon Fire Red. Slash Leaf Green, but that didn't pop up for some reason. Let me see what number. And that was episode 104. So that's the only little bit of Pokemon we have done throughout this podcast. Yes. And I should introduce what we're talking about next week or what I'm talking about next week. Uh, Next week's episode is going to be about Advance Wars. So another Game Boy Advance game because I like Game Boy Advance has some great games. So that's what we'll be talking about next week. 
And I want to give an awesome shout out to our awesome intro and outro courtesy of Helena at Hell Hath Fear. You can find her TikTok. It is a link in the show notes. Uh, also, I give a shout out to my friend Bill Tucker, who did the MCU roundup with me and all those freaking episodes and is a co-host on the show quite often. You can find his podcast, The Gamer Looks at 40, the <laughs> link in the show notes. Uh, and we have a Patreon. If you want to help us out for a little value, you can vote in our Patreon poll. If we do a new one each month, you will see a link in the show notes for our Patreon. And please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and on YouTube. We are on YouTube with only audio, but if you want your podcast, that's another great way to get them. I think I have said enough for tonight. So we will see you guys all next time. Bye, everybody. Bye.